Welcome to the Mercer County Football Show, presented by the St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton, with Rich Fisher. I'm Sean Lerman, as we get set for another weekend of football here in Mercer County. And, Rich, you emailed me and <laughs> said, Sean, you've got to stop saying that we're getting into the point of the season where we know what's going on, because we don't know what's going on. <laughs> teams are winning, teams are losing, we were, everyone is 3-2 and two or 2-3. Two and three. What is happening in Mercer County football? I do not know, Sean. I do not know. But I didn't want you to have to say that again and then me take take umbrance to it <laughs> on air. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you look at it, you have two teams with one loss, and that's Hopewell and Steiner. Hopewell's 4-1, and one, Steiner's 3-1. and one. Two teams without a win, Lawrence and West Windsor South, and the other ten teams in Mercer County are all between three and two and two and three. <laughs> so, and, and, that's and a lot parody. of those are okay. This team's three and two, and they won two games that you thought they shouldn't have won, and they lost a game that they shouldn't uh, that you thought they were going to. Win. Nobody's just okay. They're beating who they should be and losing to who they should lose to. It's it's all mixed up. Everyone's beating everybody. At the, and at this point, I don't know who should be beating who and who should be losing to who. I mean, exactly. It's 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 it's, it's crazy and it, it's fun because it's you know now you go into these games and you're like you don't know what's going to happen. So I mean you know if you if you're if you're betting the Vegas line uh, you know you you don't know who to pick in these games. Take the points. Take the points. Take the points, Take the points Take the if you points. don't know. That's right. Ride the points. <laughs> uh, as far as the games that we have on the WBCB Sports Network this weekend, uh, nothing Friday night, but on Saturday we'll have two games for you at noon on 107.7 FM The Bronx and online at 107.7 thebronxcom It will be Steiner at Nottingham in a big Hamilton Township matchup. And then Saturday at 1 o'clock, on 1490 AM WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Trenton will play at Hamilton, so another big Mercer County matchup there. And those are four teams that we're looking at, and maybe you know Steinert's the only one out of that group that isn't either 3-2 and two or 2-3, two and three. and they had a bye week, so they're 3-1. and one. If they, Who knows what would have happened in a bye week. If they will lose a game, they're right there. Right, but, right. Uh, <laughs> but Steiner has looked pretty good this season. We were saying that they're, they've are they been a pleasant surprise. Yeah, we really need to talk about the Spartans because they, did, they were just absolutely, I don't want to say flawless, because they did do some things wrong in, on, Friday, on Saturday. But they took a 28-7 win over Princeton. They moved the ball like crazy in the first half, but they just couldn't finish. Uh, Princeton's defense would toughen between the twenties, or uh, in you know by in in the twenties. But uh, Steiner second half came out, won twenty eight to seven, put twenty eight points up. They have a, they had a short passing game going really well. Kyle Muller kept going to uh, Jordan Morrison. Jordan had seven catches for over hundred yards. Uh, he spread the ball around. Six different receivers got the ball. Spartans de the Spartans defense did a tremendous job on um, on Rory Hellstrom. Uh, he's got like 36 yards or something like that. And you know David Beamer got 200 yards passing. A lot of that a lot of that came on a 70 yard touchdown pass, and, and a lot came after the game was decided. And Steiner was giving them underneath stuff going down the field. But yeah, three and one uh, Steiner. Uh, you know they're coming off two really hard seasons. Dan Caruso really knows what he's doing. When Dan Caruso has talent, and when he has experience, he knows how to get the most out of it, and he's proven that again this year. Him and his assistants, he's got a new defensive coordinator with Bill James, who's doing a great job uh, bringing the defense around. And, uh, you know, Steiner now, Steiner's got some hard games left. They've got some some of the tougher, tougher opponents. You know, Nottingham this week, we'll talk about that later, but... Right now, you gotta be, you got to like what you're seeing with Steiner. They're only lost seven points to a good Trenton team. The other big thing, that, and this is the second week in a row, that they're going to get a little bit of a headline for us, Robbinsville, now going streaking. This is a team that, that couldn't buy a win, and now suddenly uh, two wins in a row and a winnable game coming up on Saturday against Riverside. But wins over Heightstown and Bordentown, it's a good time to be in Robbinsville. Break up the Ravens, baby. <laughs> Break up the Ravens. 0-17 oh and, and now 2-0. Oh. Uh, they, they didn't take Bordentown lightly. They... Came out, they did what they had to do. Uh, you know, they, they got a really tough running back. Uh, he scored three touchdowns. Uh, uh, what the heck? I, I always forget, uh, where is he? There we are. Yeah, Elijah McNeil, three touchdowns, right. over 100 yards rushing. So, uh, you know, they they uh, they have some players. They have some talent, and now these guys are starting to get noticed because they're winning games. 
We'll take a look at the rest of the games that happened this past week in Mercer County when we come back. This is the Mercer County Football Show, presented by the St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton. Discover the dealer for the people, Haldeman Ford Subaru, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. One of the region's finest state-of-the-art service facilities for all makes and models. A service facility so good, local school districts get their buses serviced at Haldeman. Police fleets, local municipalities get their cars and trucks serviced at Haldeman. From oil changes to tire sales, Haldeman Ford services all makes and models. And they offer tires for just $10 over cost on name brand tires like Goodyear and Pirelli. And their waiting room offers complimentary food. And there's a special Wi-Fi room available for your use. So no matter where you purchase your car, get it serviced at Haldeman Ford, the dealership for the people on Route 33 in Hamilton Township. Hi, Merle Reese to tell you about our good friends at the Revere Restaurante Italiano in nearby Ewing Township at 802 River Road. I can tell you that from South Philadelphia to New York's Mulberry Street, there's no better Italian cuisine than that served at the Revere. Start your meal with one of their great appetizers or salads. Entrees include outstanding veal dishes, fresh seafood daily, excellent steaks and chops, homemade pasta dishes, daily specials, and much more. You can also enjoy their bar area, where on most weekends, entertainment is offered. The Revere also does off-premise catering and can accommodate private parties for any affair, including business functions. Call the Revere Ristorante Italiano for more information and reservations at 609-882-6365. 882-6365. The Revere Ristorante Italiano open Monday through Friday for lunch and seven days for dinner at 802 River Road, right off the Wilbertha Road exit on Route 29 in nearby Ewing Township. Welcome back to the Mercer County Football Show presented by Fish4Scores.com. That's Fish number four scores. And Rich, I see you got the, the Fish 4 <laughs> Scores official T-shirt on today. Well, you got to wear it on game week when two township teams play each other. So with Steiner going to Nottingham, you got to bring out the uh, paraphernalia. That'll be a big one. <laughs> Steiner at Nottingham this Saturday at noon on 107.7 FM The Bronx, 107.7 The Bronx.com. And then Saturday at 1.00. It's Hamilton at Trenton. I said Trenton at Hamilton earlier, but it is Hamilton at Trenton. That game on 1490 AM WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. couple of big games, but those aren't, football is not the only thing happening in Hamilton right now. Well, all right, I'll tell you right, right now the hottest team in Hamilton Township is the Steiner Boys soccer team on Saturday. They kicked off homecoming day at Steiner with a 3 0 win over West Woodger Plainsboro South, and South was 9 0 1. So that was their first loss. And even Pirates coach Brian Fisher said they just dominated us in the second half. They got three goals. They wanted it more. So uh, I guess if we're going to call a team of the week, it's uh, the Steiner Spartan Boys soccer team. They're at 9 2 1 now, and uh, away they go. Getting back to football, uh, some of the other games from this past weekend. Uh, one big one Trenton Central and Notre Dame. We're in action at Notre Dame, a 15-13 win for the Irish as uh, that one was delayed a little bit. Took a little <laughs> long to get started because of some weather, but they did play it, and it was a, a good, close game. That was delayed a lot of it, 8-15 <laughs> start. But what a game, and Steiner, or Notre Dame quarterback Xavier Lozinski came back from his toe injury to get them out of the Hopewell game. And Xavier Lozinski showed what mental toughness is all about because he was having a nightmare night. He threw four interceptions. He ended up with five on the night. Five interceptions. Most quarterbacks will crawl in a hole and hide. So what does Xavier Lozinski do? He throws two touchdown passes in the second half to win the game for, for Notre Dame. Uh, Jake Lieka gets one, and uh, Thomas Hackett gets the second one. And not only does Hackett get the touchdown, but... Trenton scores with 30 seconds to go to pull within two, goes for two points, gets a penalty, moves back five yards, but Hackett comes out of nowhere to knock down the two-point conversion pass and preserve the win for Notre Dame. And those are two evenly matched teams, and the final score you know, indicates that, 15-13. And uh, those are two teams that are, you know... Uh, they're good, but they just played to each other. So one team was going to win and one team was going to lose. We talked earlier a little bit about teams that are winning games that you maybe expected them to lose. Not that you would expect a loss, but 
Ewing Blue Devils improving to three and two with a 29-26 win over Northern Burlington. That was a big win for, for the Blue Devils. Huge, because we discussed last week, Ewing was having trouble getting their footing. They had won one, lost one, won one. They finally have put together back-to-back -back wins, uh, you know, and this was... Uh, they, they had to hold on. They were up 29-16 to 16 in this game, and they had to hold on as Township put up a little com comeback. But quarterback Adamian Doggett, once again, rushed for 133 yards, uh, three touchdowns, and he threw for another touchdown. So he was responsible for all four touchdowns. Wow. Uh, you know, maybe Ewing now is just starting to get it together a little bit. You know, back-to-back -back wins are always, uh, always big to get teams rolling. Well, we mentioned it a little in the beginning, talking about Steiner, that 28-7 to win over Princeton. Princeton struggling a little bit, but that Steiner team keeps rolling. Yeah, well, you know, and I, this is the first time I got to see Princeton this year, and now I understand why they're struggling. They don't have numbers. They're, the guys are just getting worn down. I'll tell you what, they play hard, and they play gutty. But, they, you, you know, Matt and I were commenting on the air, Prince, Steiner's sideline went from 130 to the next 30. Wow. That, kids that, that, you know, lined up that far. Princeton's sideline went from like the 40 to the 50, like 10 yards worth of players. So they don't have a lot of depth. For what they have, they really hang in and do a good job. You know, I give them credit for, but they just, they, they're, I'm sure they're just getting worn down in games. And, and as we said, Steiner's playing well. Steiner's got a veteran crew on defense, got some veteran guys on offense, and just keep moving. And as we kind of wrap up some of our in depth discussion of uh, the games from last week, there were two scores and two teams that dropped to two and three where they just got blown out, and it was a, a surprise that they weren't able to do any scoring for me. Uh, the Nottingham team that lost 35 to nothing to Rancocas Valley, uh, an RV team that was one and three going into the game, so I was surprised by that because Nottingham had recently beaten Allentown, who had scored 81 points in a game, and they scored just seven points this week in a, in a big loss against Lenape. Yeah, um... Nottingham, you know what? There's a little bit of bad blood between Nottingham and Rancocas Valley. That's turned into a pretty, pretty good rivalry. Um, some things were said and things like that, and in the papers and on the website. And uh, and I think RV took umbrage of that. And uh, Nottingham, things went bad and just started to snowball in Nottingham. So that was a problem there. The Lenape game, Lenape beating Allentown 41-7. The, the 41 doesn't surprise me because Allentown's you know had difficulty with defense this year, and Lenape's undefeated. I was surprised that Allentown only got seven points, and they must have really keyed on Jordan Winston because they held him to 40 yards rushing, the, the Allentown quarterback. Joe Mamino got 101 yards for the Redbirds. You know, he's their second leading rusher and would be most teams' first leading rusher. But they really shut down Winston, and he's the guy that, you know, makes it go for Allentown. So I, I, I can only assume without being there that they did a good job of keying on Winston. So a little shocking, though, that the Redbirds did only get seven points. Some other scores from around Mercer County over the weekend. The Hamilton Hornets picked up a 40-7 home win over West Windsor Plainsboro South. The Hopewell Valley Bulldogs had a big road win over Willingboro, 31-7 in that one. Uh, the West Windsor Plainsboro Northern Knights had a 44-8 road win over Heightstown, improving to 2-3 on the year. And the Lawrence Cardinals fell to Burlington Township 43-14 to on the road. So those were the games in Mercer County this past weekend. We'll have a preview of the coming weekend after this on the Mercer County Football Show. Presented by the St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton. Jerry Blavitt here to tell you about St. Francis Medical Center the heart hospital in the city of Trenton. St. Francis Medical Center is one of the region's top cardiac care centers, serving all of Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. Their staff of highly trained physicians provide state-of-the-art heart care to patients with cardiovascular disease and pride themselves as being the only regional heart center to offer a full spectrum of individualized services. And Consumer Report ranks St. Francis Medical Center in the top 10 hospitals in New Jersey for safety and the number one hospital in Mercer County, St. Francis Medical Center, the Heart Hospital. Don't forget if you miss any of your local high school sports action, you can read all about it in tomorrow's edition of the Trentonian. For your complete local and national news seven days a week, it's the Trentonian or online at thetrentonian.com. The only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington and Mercer County seven days a week, it's the Trentonian. 
Welcome back to the Mercer County Football Show, presented by the St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton. With Rich Fisher, I'm Sean Lerman. A couple of great games coming up on Saturday for you on the WBCB Sports Network at noon on 107.7 FM The Bronx and online at 107.7 thebronkcom The Steiner Spartans, 3-1 and one on the season, will travel to the 2-3 and three Nottingham North Stars. That's the big Hamilton Township matchup. It's a rivalry game. Bad blood between two good teams. Very much so, Sean. I mean, this is, you know, you throw the records out the window, like they say. Steiner's 3-1, and one, Nottingham's 2-3, and three, but this is the battle of Clockner Road. These schools are about three miles apart from each other on the same street. Steiner really would like to win this game. Steiner has not beaten Nottingham since 2009, and they played every year. Steiner is off to its best start. They haven't been 3-1 since 2011, which incidentally was the year that they went to the Central Jersey Group 3 championship game. So if you believe in omens, um, you know, that's a pretty good one. Um, obviously, Nottingham wants to turn things around. They had a close loss to Pemberton, and then they just got really beat down last week. So they, they're angry. They're a mad team. Uh, the, the big thing here is going to be how Steiner's quick passing game, short passing game, because Caruso told me after the game last week, we want to use our passing game as our running game. We want our short pass to be as smooth as a handoff to Alex Rubio. That's what he said. Um, now, doing that against Princeton was one thing. Um, Nottingham has a lot of quickness. They, Nottingham is quick, so I don't know. You can get the ball out to spaces to these guys on the sideline for Steiner against Nottingham, but they might get there quicker and close those gaps up quick. You, you don't know. We'll see what they have, they have in mind for that. However, Steiner proved they could stop a quality running back by shutting down Rory Hellstrom. Now they have Ben Fair to contend with. If they do the same job on Ben Fair that they did on, uh, on Rory Hellstrom, Nottingham could be in for a long day. Um, the other thing is Steiner can run the ball, too. We've seen that with Rubio and Morris. And Morris, and they put him back in for the Wildcat again last week, and he scored a couple touchdowns, so that's still a weapon. Um, but you, you just never know with this game. You really don't. Any uh, any time the two township, te the three township teams play against each other, it's it really is bad blood. I mean, good blood, bad blood. You know, they respect each other and they're buddies. But God, do they want to win these games? So, uh, I, you know, this could be a marquee game of the week. We'll see. Yeah, another potentially big game this week, Saturday at one o'clock on fourteen ninety AM WBCB and online at wbcb fourteen ninety dot com. The Hamilton Hornets two and two on the season coming off of a big win over West Windsor, Plainsboro South, will travel to Trenton to take on the 3-2 and two Tornadoes, who are coming off of a loss to Notre Dame. And I think this will be a very even matchup when I look at it on paper. Yeah, I do too. Um, Trenton, surprisingly, Trenton threw the ball a lot against Notre Dame. I don't know if they saw something in Notre Dame's defense or what, but like you said, they threw a lot against the, at the game we were at too. Um, so... You know, I don't know, maybe they they run a lot one game and don't the next. But uh, their running game is going to be challenged because one of the strengths of Hamilton is their front seven. So uh, it's going to be a little bit hard to run against them. Um, Hamilton is coming off a much-needed win. I mean, let's face it, they should have won that game. West Windsor's winless, and they didn't have, like, a bunch of players who were suspended or something that happened at the school. So you're playing a shorthanded, winless team. You had to win that game, and they did convincingly, 40 to seven. Now they play a Trenton team, and this is you know you this, this is big for power points for Hamilton because Trenton's a Group Five school. Uh, it's big for Hamilton to prove, hey, we can beat a good team um, on the road if they can do it. It's also huge for Trenton because you got you know when you lose a game, you got to bounce back. You know you're you're three and one. You don't want to be three and three. Uh, so Trenton. Trenton's got to look out for Hamilton's new sophomore quarterback, Ezekiel Peterson, who's uh, kind of taken over a little bit. They had the original quarterback, Mark Bethea, out catching touchdown passes last week. So you don't know what they're going to do. Um, this, I, I agree with you, Sean. I think this is going to be a one of those backyard brawl kind of games, bare knuckle type of thing. We're going to you know, beat each other up a little bit. Yeah, a lot of tough kids between those two yeah. teams, and I think it's going to be a physical, good football game. What you really think football is all about, sure. that's what we're going to see on Saturday at 1 o'clock. Some of the other teams from around the area and what they'll be doing this weekend, well, Rancoke is Valley, the 2-3 and three Red Devils. After that big win over Nottingham, they'll have a bye this week. They get to take the weekend off, a hard-earned bye week by that team. The Notre Dame Irish will play at West Windsor Plainsboro North on Friday. The 4-1 Hopewell Valley Bulldogs will travel to Delran. They'll play there Friday at 7 o'clock. The Allentown Redbirds, uh, sorry, I don't have them on my sheet right here for what they do this weekend. Allentown 
will host Heightstown this Friday at 7 o'clock. Uh, the Nottingham North Stars, as we said, will host Steinert on Saturday. Uh, the Pirates will host uh, of West Windsor Plainsboro South will host Ewing this Friday. Uh, the Princeton Tigers, now at 2-3 and three on the season, will take on Winslow Township Saturday at 2 o'clock. Lawrence will travel to Cinnaminson on Friday, and Robbinsville, 2-3 and three on the year, will try to keep the streak alive and get to 500 on the season at Riverside on Saturday. A lot of good games this week. What sticks out for you, Rich? Right away, Notre Dame and West Windsor North jumps out because uh, this is going to be interesting. West Windsor North, they got shut out on opening night by Steiner. Since then, they've scored 148 points in their last four games. Uh, this is a this is an offense that can really do some things as they're proving, um, uh, and you know Notre Dame, uh, you know Notre Dame is uh, looks like they're back. Xavier Lazinski looks like he's uh, he's healthy. You know maybe he got his bad bet quote bad game out of the way this past week coming back. Uh, I think Notre Dame's defense is going to have a challenge. They're going to have to stop this West Windsor offense. They're going to have to keep that quarterback from running wild. So that that's one of the more intriguing games of the week. Another one is Robbinsville at Riverside. Uh, I actually covered that game last year. Robbinsville got beat 34-14, to but they actually did some good things in that game. And there was a chance to, that they could have won early on, um, or at least got ahead or something like that. Um, Riverside, coached by Pete Brescia, the former Heightstown High coach. So uh, Brescia will get to see a, a Mercer County team. Uh, obviously his team needs to slow down McNeil. McNeil actually rushed for 194 yards last week. And Robbinsville even used some trickery when Taylor Twomley threw a 30-yard option pass to Greg Moyer to give Robbinsville the lead before the halftime. So you got to watch out for that. Uh, Hopewell, Hopewell's emerging as uh, you know one of the best teams in the county. They're rolling on all cylinders right now. They got four straight wins. They had their way with Willingboro, 31 to seven. Jeff Wiley, since becoming the quarterback in Game Two this year, has become a big-time offensive force for them. He threw two touchdowns. Rush for another touchdown, and he's back at defensive end and returned a uh, an interception 50 yards for a touchdown. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a better high school football player th than Wiley. I'll he, tell he's you, absolutely incredible. This year, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I've seen more than you, so I don't know if I would go that far. That, just that's yet. Fair. I mean, I, I've only seen <laughs> yeah. a few few years of high school football since working for BCB, but right. I mean, I've never seen anyone dominate on both sides of the ball the way that he does. Yeah, I mean, right now, yeah, you, you're, you're, you're talking about a a front runner for a player of the year. Jeff Wiley's got to be one of them. Um, Hopewell's won their four games by a total of 21 and a half points, so they're not struggling in these games. Um, Heightstown and Allentown, now these are two teams that we said, they're, 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 they're both tough to figure out. You're really not sure what's going on with Allentown. Um, I guess when your defense struggles, you're going to struggle. You're going right. to be inconsistent, and that's kind of what's happening to the uh, Redbirds. Heightstown, they got a few good wins, but now they've lost two, two straight games, and they've only scored 14 points in these last two games after getting 88 in their first three. So I don't know what's going on with the offense. Um, I mean, Ryan Conlon, quarterback, had a great game. Uh, I don't know if teams are really figuring out what to do against him. Uh, Johnny Andre had 200 yards in the opener, and I, I haven't heard much of his name again. So, I, you know, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, I, I guess it's just two inconsistent teams right now. Um, Winslow, Princeton, these are both these are both two schools that are really hungry for wins. Uh, Winslow's lost two straight by 51 points after a 3-0 start. Obviously, Princeton's coming off its loss to Steiner. Um, you know, they, they, Princeton took a lot of shots downfield against Steiner. They, they, they came close on some of them. They connected for 70 yards on one. But, uh, you know, I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure they're going to keep trying to do that or what. So, uh, we'll see what Winslow can do against that kind of an offense. Um, Ewing at West Windsor South and Lawrence at Cinnamons and you know South and Lawrence are both winless teams and they've had challenges every week. Ewing seems to be getting it together and Cinnamons has its first loss. They have some skilled athletes, so you know it, it just the schedule is just tough for for two winless teams, South and Lawrence. So, but that's about it, John. It's, uh, should wrap it for this week. Yeah, it should be a good week of football coming up in Mercer County. A reminder at noon on 107.7 The Bronx, it's Steiner at Nottingham, and at one o'clock on Saturday on 1490 WBCB, it will be Hamilton at Trenton. I'm I'm Sean Lerman. He's Rich Fisher. I almost said I'm Rich Fisher. He's Rich Fisher of the Trentonian and FishForScores.com. 
I'm Sean Lerman. This has been the Mercer County Football Show, presented by the St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton. Have a great week. Identity theft. <laughs>